Welcome everyone to today's podcast. My name is Sky Denton and I am a pain reduction coach, specifically for people with ankylosing spondylitis, psoriatic arthritis, and irritable bowel syndrome. I specialize in those because those are the diseases that I was diagnosed with, those are what crippled me for years, and those are also what I have for the most part left behind me and moved on to living a life with very, very, very little pain. I have a unique and rich experience and education. My experience reclaiming my life from disease is quite profound, there's no doubt. And I followed a system that helped me do this. I followed a system to help get me back on track, and that's exactly what I want for you, is to get back on track, living your life, feeling good again, and not carrying pain in your body every single day. So, I know without a doubt that psychology, that understanding our brain, is absolutely, absolutely primary in understanding what to do to reclaim your life from chronic pain and chronic disease. This is absolutely primary, and so I've made it my specialty. It's what I've dedicated the last 10 years to understanding, and I've seen it transform people's lives very quickly and allowed them to get off the diets and eat what they want and live a very joyous life with a lot less pain. I want you to understand that no matter how results come about, whether it's through some diet or something else, if there's permanent results in the body, okay, if there's permanent results in the body, there's always a psychological change as well. More specifically, there's new neural circuitry in the brain. Something changed in the brain every single time. So my philosophy, my methodology, my AS Freedom model of coaching goes right to the brain. Like why not, why not bypass years of diets if we don't have to? Why not bypass years of being on medications and dealing with side effects if we don't have to? If we can go straight to the brain and make the changes that influence the body's entire nervous system and immune system from the very, very central command point, which is our brilliant, brilliant brain. So understanding that those are the fundamentals that I teach, that I stand behind, that I have studied. Without further ado, let's go into today's podcast. All right, everyone, I'm glad you're here. And I'm really, really excited about today's podcast because I'm interviewing not only someone who's a very good friend of mine, he's been a life-changing mentor for me. He is the single most important person that I met on my life path to reclaiming my life from disease. And we get access to him today, right here, right now. His name is Peter Winslow. And he has a doctorate of clinical hypnotherapy with a, with a focus on behavioral modification. Very, very interesting. He has certifications in psychoneuroimmunology, orthobionomy, exercise physiology, medical hypnotherapy, myotherapy, polarity, and nutritional sciences. Right? So this is stacking up to someone who's really done their homework. <laughs> he has a master's equivalent in holistic nutrition. He is a lecturer, teacher, award-winning author, retreat facilitator, and public speaker. And I'm going to add to that. He is one of the people on this planet that is the most dedicated to helping people reclaim their lives from, from chronic pain that I know of, that I have ever met, that I have personally been around, and someone that, like I said, influenced my life to a very, very, very high degree. He is the creator of the Winslow Way. The Winslow Way is, is the method, it's the exact schooling that I went through to reduce pain and symptoms from ankylosing spondylitis. The Winslow Way is what I used to rebuild my body, reprogram my brain, change my nervous system, reduce inflammation, reduce pain, and move on to living a fantastic life. Peter has been pain-free for 30 years, 
he had AS, struggled with depression, and a myriad of other issues when it comes to dealing with, with emotional pain, physical pain, ankylosing spondylitis. And uh, the guy really has come from a place of, of doing a lot of work. He understands so much. And he has led countless others into better lives. So without any further talking, I'm going to get right into the interview today. I'm excited you're here. And I'm really, really looking forward to having you listen to this episode. Peter, good to have you here, my man. How are you doing and what is good in your world today? Hello, Sky. Hey, it's great to be with you here tonight. I'm really enjoying uh, seeing you again. What's good in my life? Oh, everything. Life is good, man. I'm telling you what, life is good. I do what I love and I love mm -hmm. what I do. And now I'm able to help so many more people because they finally understood that with ankylosing spondylitis, it isn't purely a physical condition. You know, it's uh, also a mental and emotional situation and the mind-body awareness is what is required to overcome the symptoms. So people are realizing that just doing drugs or diets will never get them fully cured. So until they heal their mental and emotional pain, it's unlikely that they'll ever come off the drugs or the diets or be whole again. So. More and more people are discovering that. They're coming to the awareness of what's really going on here with themselves. And so we're able to help more and more and more people as the world turns. So I'm very happy about that. Yeah, cool. Cool, I agree. You know, it's so true what you say. And one way I like to think about it is, is there's, there's the physical component in the body, like the chronic pain and inflammation. And then anything that affects the body also affects the brain. So there's, there's the psychology of chronic pain. There's how the brain is processing all of this. And one thing I love about your teachings and what I personally learned from you is, is you understand that, where a lot of people, they don't know that. So they don't think that they can change it or do anything about it. And you know quite differently. True. And what you just said hits the nail on the head, Skylar. Uh, the brain is where chronic pain is processed. And so that's where it actually lives in the body. So the antidote to chronic pain is rewiring the brain through what's called neuroplasticity. And I know it sounds very technical and science is all over it. And you know, all the uh, people that we study and read their works, the neuropsychologists and the neuroscientists and all are talking about plastic, the plasticity of the brain and how it operates and how it changes. But it's really very simple. It's happening all the time anyway. Just pick up a new habit and you rewire the brain to process that information. So what we do is we change our habits of thinking and our habits of uh, doing, you know, what we're thinking and doing, and that rewires the brain out of chronic pain. Yeah, 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 it's amazing. And you might have just sort of answered my next question, which was, which was the fact that you and I both, and especially you, are sitting here with so much knowledge and experience with ankylosing spondylitis. And there are nearly 3 million, 2.7 million people that are already diagnosed in the US alone. And so considering what you know and your experience coaching people for a long time, what are a couple of things that you would like some of the audience members to understand? Yeah, great question, huh? Well, the first thing obviously is that I want people to understand that they're not helpless and it's not hopeless. And they don't have to be victims for life of this dreadful, painful condition, you know, which I had, which you had, the symptoms are long gone for us because we rebuilt our brains and did what we had to do to overcome it. And I want people to know that that is possible, that there are people like us who have done this. There's many more. I've helped hundreds of people in my career to overcome this condition and get free of the symptoms and never return to it. So that's the first thing I would want people to understand is don't believe anybody who says there is no hope, there is no cure, there's nothing you can do, and we're going to fight the symptoms for the rest of your life, which is apparently the latest news on what I'm hearing from people who have AS, what they're getting from the world around them and what everybody's telling them. So they're preparing themselves to live with this condition for the rest of their lives, and they're wiring their brain to do exactly that. So the second thing that I would have everybody understand is that their purpose is to feel good. So feeling good is a natural antidote for what ails us. 
the trouble is that people don't know how to feel good, right? It feels terrible. It's painful. It's, it's, it's real. It's in the body. It's not just in the mind. It's a mind-body condition, which means it's absolutely real in the body and it doesn't feel good. And so what we're getting people to do is get to feeling good about who they are and what they're doing and let the body heal itself because the body is a self-healing machine. You know this, and you've read it in my books where I talk about the fact that if you cut your finger, it heals itself up. You don't have to understand how it does that for it to work. You don't have to direct traffic and get in there and make it happen. It just does it anyway. However, if you cut the finger on a cadaver, a dead body, it can't do that. The healing source has left the body along with the life force energy. So this life force prana, this chi, or whatever language you use to describe the life force energy circulating within you is the healing source in the body, and the body is a self-healing machine whether we understand it or not. Now, we've got to get out of the way. I mean, if you've got a cut on your finger, you don't want it to get infected, so you've got to clean it up and you know, make sure that it's able to repair itself properly. And if you have a broken bone, a broken arm, say, you've got to go to the emergency room and have it set in a cast and properly treated but it isn't the cast that heals the broken bone. It's the osteoblast or the bone cells knitting themselves back together after you've set the bone in place so that it's proximal enough to be able to do that work by itself. So I want people to realize all you have to do is get out of the way to let the healing begin and commence to fruition. And the way you do that is through the mind. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like people are probably going, what? <laughs> Through the mind, what's the mind got to do with anything? <laughs> well, it's got everything to do with it. It's a mind-body condition. People say, well, I'm not sure if I understand or even uh, believe such a thing, you know, that the mind and the body are inextricably linked. But of course they are. If you try to remove the mind from the body or vice versa, the body from the mind, if you try to separate these things, it's certain death. I mean, you can't live without your mind and your body would expire immediately if you tried to take the mind out of the body. So the, the proof of the mind-body connection really in medical terms and scientific uh, studies is called stress. Stress is a mental condition that affects the physical health of the body. Everybody's aware of that now and they're like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I've heard of stress and stress-related illness. And by the way, stress and stress-related illness accounts for about 90 to 95% of the doctor visits that, you know, doctors report their patients are coming in for stress and stress-related illness, 95%. Yeah. That's proof positive of a mind-body connection. Yeah. So people are trained to be stressed out, you know, and they don't have the proper skills and tools to be able to alleviate that stress. Uh, in a way that's helpful and useful. So what happens is when the mental stress accrues over years and years and years, or even just months and months, it rewires the brain into chronic conditions. And that's why there is no cure from the medical society for these situations, because they're chronic. The word chronic means doctors and drugs do not cure it. But stress is the culprit here. And so when we alleviate that stress, the body gets back on track. The immune system can do what it does best and function properly to be able to heal the body of these conditions. And everybody needs to know about that. Yeah. Yeah, totally. A couple things. I mean, so to recap a little bit, you said that the two things you want people to know are that, that it's possible to do something about the pain for one. Absolutely. Right? And that it's possible to feel good again. Totally. And I think back about my diagnostic process and going from just learning a lot about the disease in ways that didn't make me feel good <laughs> until, right. I found, until I found <laughs> you. And you're like, hey, you're the first person that was like, you can do something about this. It's possible to feel good again. Not only have I done it, right? This is what you were saying. Not only have I done it, but I know the process. And it's, it's so cool to be sitting here today. It's literally a dream come true to be doing this podcast with you because I was so crippled with AS. And now to be here and to be able to tell other people that it's possible 
and to tell other people that, hey, like we feel good. Our bodies are back in balance. We learned, we learned how to do it. It's, I mean, like I said, it's a dream come true. Well, it's such a blessing, isn't it? I mean, we're truly gifted to be able to do what we do and to help people in the way that we can and move forward with this. So I absolutely share those sentiments with you, Skylar. In fact, people need to know that feeling good is the job. So the more they study the disease, the farther away they get from feeling good. So I always tell my people, my clients and my people to stop studying the disease and start studying feeling good. Put your focus on what it is you'd like to experience. So of course, you know, that's counterintuitive, which many of the techniques I teach people are counterintuitive. They don't stand to reason. You know, they don't make sense on the face of it. One of the first of those counterintuitive principles is that if you want to overcome ankylosing spondylitis, stop fighting with ankylosing spondylitis. Because the more you fight it, the more you empower it, and the worse and worse it gets, as we've all witnessed. It just continues to degenerate as time goes by, and all we're doing is fighting the symptoms. We get temporary relief, you know, from the medications or the diets or what have you, but they're not truly in alignment with long-term health. Yeah. So I teach people how to feel good because everybody knows how to feel bad. Everybody's been taught how to be unhappy. Most people don't know how to be happy. And it really is a factor for your health and wellness going forward that you be happy and whole. In fact, that's what health means in the old Greek language. Health comes from a root word that means whole. Oh, wow. And the same root word of wealth. Health, wealth, and wholeness are all the same thing in terms of abundance. We have abundant health, abundant wealth, abundant wholeness, abundant love, abundant joy, abundant peace of mind. Health, wealth, happiness, love, joy, and peace of mind are all one thing called abundance. So if any one of those things are lacking, it's hard to be happy in the other departments as well. So what we're doing is taking a holistic approach. And for some people, that's a loaded term, right? Holistic means wacky or weird because it doesn't seem to be backed up by prevailing scientific uh, methodologies of the day. But holistic simply means the whole person. So we're addressing not just your body as a machine, we're also addressing your emotions and your spirit and your mind. So psychology or, or the, the root word psycho literally means spirit in Latin. Hmm. So we're addressing your mind, your body and your spirit. And that's where healing comes from, from these chronic conditions that science can't fix with drugs. Because it isn't just in the body, it's in the whole being. So that's why we take this holistic approach to the whole person and not just carving up the body into body parts like a machine. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I even admit in the beginning, the word holistic to me, I didn't really know what that meant. I thought it <laughs> meant like, you know, like massage or something like that. And I just didn't believe it was actually going to help with AS, especially and I tested positive for HLA B27. And, and so the, the term holistic was kind of new for me. And now understanding some of the science, some of the new cutting edge science that's out and my own nearly decade of study now into understanding health in a very comprehensive holistic way. It's like, it makes perfect sense. Yes, it does. And I'm really uh, amazed at what you've done, you know, with your education moving forward from, Having had AS as bad as you had it, you were in one of the worst positions of anybody I've ever seen. I mean, I remember watching you crawl from one room to the next or something like that. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh. and look how far you've come. And now you've learned so much about the science and what science can teach us about what's happening here. And what you've learned is that the body follows the mind. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm very blessed to be here. And, and that's, that's perfect, because that leads us into the, the next question I had. And it's that you, know, you work with a lot of different types of people. And I was one of the very first to really like to, to get it and to, to make very rapid changes. And so what do you think it is that made me so successful? Yeah. 
So you did succeed incredibly well in remarkable time. As I said, you were in such a dire strait when I, you first came to me, and then you moved into health in under six months. <clears throat> and you've been in remission and recovery ever since then, and it's been, what, about five years now or even more? Yeah, five. So it's mind, body, and spirit. You have a resilient body. Your body ha knows what it feels like to be healthy because you were a healthy young athlete before you were stricken with AS and the autoimmune conditions that came along with that. So your body resiliently rebuilt itself more rapidly than the average person perhaps. But I think everybody can do that if they're in, in the uh, spirit of doing what is required as far as moving their bodies to strengthen themselves, then they'll have the same results as well. But mentally, you were ready for it. You're intelligent. You were understanding what I was teaching and you were ready to learn these things and let go of what was no longer working for you. And then spiritually, you have a calling. This is part of your destiny. You're not sitting here for no reason. Your life path has led you right here to where you are today, this moment. And now you can share this with the rest of the world in a way that makes positive changes in a ripple effect across the planet. That is meaningful. Yeah. And so it's no mistake that you got here the way you did. So it's a mission and a purpose. <laughs> so mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual means came together in your case. And this is why you are where you are today. Yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah. Well, thank you. That makes me feel pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's our job, right? To feel good. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants to feel good, Skylar. Everybody is after the same thing. Now, they all have different ideas about how to get there. You know, some people feel like I'll, I'll feel good when I make $10 million. And somebody else would say, well, I'll feel good when my kids do what I've asked them to do. And somebody else says, I'll feel good when I graduate from school. And they all have different ideas about how they'll feel good, but they're all trying to feel good. That's what everybody wants. So I ask, what if you could feel good anyway? What if you felt good first and then went after that $10 million? What yeah. if you felt good first and then you communicated with your children in a, in a better and more effective way so that they would be more obedient or you know, more uh, in alignment with what it is that you're teaching them? What if you could feel good anyway? How would that change things? How would that change your life? And it changes things remarkably, incredibly. So that's why I say our life purpose is the same. Now, if you ask 10 different people what life purpose means, you're gonna get 10 different answers and five of them are gonna be some version of I don't know. <laughs> but I say your purpose, your inner purpose is the same as mine, it's the same as everyone else. And that purpose is to feel good. That's what everybody wants. So now learn to feel good anyway and see how well you heal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you just, you just nailed it there. And, and that's exactly what you taught me how to do. I felt terrible. I, I felt terrible for, for years before AS. And then AS was just icing on the cake of reasons for me to feel bad. And it didn't help my situation. So Peter, one of the things that I'm most grateful for with what you taught me was how to live a life free of pain and not be stuck on the diets. Because diets, man, I, I struggled on them. I did the low starch diet. I did the no starch diet. I did, I did the gaps, it's a, a gut and psychology syndrome diet. I did I remember doing everything. I remember putting spinach and steak in a blender. And I, <laughs> I, mean, I it, was, it was years. And there was a period where I was doing diets and supplements. And I was taking like 36 to 45 pills a day. Oh. Right? And, and some of those were pharmaceutical medications and, and they were helpful. The others were all kinds of herbal supplements. And you helped me let go of the diets. And I was able to reclaim my life from chronic pain and AS and eat whatever I wanted. That's a dream come true for a lot of people. What are your, 
what are your thoughts on the diet? And why was I able to, to break free from the limitations that diets hold people to? Well, you were able to break free of it because you finally changed your mind and strengthened your body at the same time, uh, realizing what was working and what was not working for you anymore. The thing about the diets is, and there's many different approaches to it, they're very popular because they're scientifically based. You know, it's nutrition. And I studied nutrition at school in pre-med uh, studies that I did back in the 90s, came out with a master's equivalent in holistic nutrition, and you know, used it extensively in my own life, but I never did, I'd already beaten AS by then, so I never did the diets for you know, controlling pain, because I was already out of pain by the time I studied nutrition. And you know, I knew all about the no starch and low starch diets and keto and all the rest of it in those days. So I was aware of what was going on, but I never used any of that when I was coming through my process of healing and you know, recovery from ankylosing spondylitis. So I didn't see the correlation. I mean, I understood the fact, which is that there is some relief there. You know, people who cut the starch out of their diet are gonna lessen the inflammation and you cut the sugars out and inflammation is dropping tremendously. So that's useful and helpful. The problem is that it makes you weaker. As you stop exposing your immune system to these pathogens or these other elements that cause the havoc in the body, the immune system down regulates and it gets weaker and weaker and weaker. And so you're eating less and less and less. And pretty soon your body's not healthy because it's not good for you in the long term. So again, I recognize that these things are, are popular probably because there's a scientific basis there that people can believe in. And that's what everybody's looking for is something to believe in. You know, they want hope, they want answers. They want, they want some knowledge and rock steady, ability to believe in it. So they, they start on diets and like you did, you found some relief at first. So you kept going with it and your system got weaker and you got lighter and lighter and weaker and weaker as you lost all the weight and became frail. So for a lot of people, of course, in our culture, losing weight would not be a bad thing. However, you weren't overweight to begin with. And you, you like the same thing happened to me when I had AS, I whittled the way down to about 135 pounds. And I'm 5'11", you know, I weigh 175 or 180 now, and I'm a typical healthy guy. Uh, so 135, I was a stick figure, you know? And I saw that you were like that when you first came to me too, because basically you were eating nothing but, you know, hay and bone broth or, you know, something. Yeah. And that's all that's left on your menu. <laughs> regulating and cutting out foods more and more and more and it's a trap yeah so i've had a lot of people be interested and they'll come to me and they'll say wow so you advocate being able to eat anything you want and i'm i'm absolutely yes now this is not a license for ignorance as i often say we have to be smart about it this doesn't mean that you live on drive through and dunkin donuts you want to take good care of yourself and feed yourself well but you should be able to eat anything you want. I can eat anything I want, anytime I want, with no relapse and no, no issues at all. So what is making the difference is the immune system. So we want the immune system to be stronger, not weaker. And people haven't realized, but they're becoming aware now, and they're starting to realize that the drugs and the diets for fighting the symptoms actually weaken the immune system. And that's why for all the effort people put into their health, there's no cure yeah. for them there. That's why, because they're weakening their immune system. So we need to strengthen the immune system. When your immune system's working properly, you can eat whatever you want. Yeah. So that's where I am and that's what I teach people how to do. Yeah. And it's, it's such a blessing to be able to eat whatever I want. I remember right when i started working with you you we talked about diet and i was eating a very limited diet and it didn't feel good i felt i mean you nailed it i felt frail i felt weak i felt very confined to very specific food items and i was afraid of everything else and it stressed me out like you know like yeah. the basis of it it was freaking stressful and the peace of mind that came from 
understanding what you were saying and the science behind it and my trust in you as a person allowed me to begin eating what I wanted. And you're right. Like it made me feel stronger. It made me feel more empowered. So my, my, my head was working better and my immune system was working better. And it's one of the most important pieces that that allowed me to get here. I think that's it. To eat what I want. Absolutely. And I will never forget one of our last meetings, one of our last coaching sessions, we took a trip up to Sedona and hiked in the Red Rocks. And then we went to the Mexican restaurant for dinner after. And you <laughs> ate for an hour. I was done in 20 minutes. And I just sat there enjoying my beer while you kept eating and eating and eating. Mexican food, rice, beans. Totally. Or beans cheese. and rice and cheese, man. Like the exact same <laughs> stuff that, that, that the part of me that likes to eat and that is an athlete that, that wants the fuel, I was finally able to do that again. Like what a celebration that was. You know? It was absolutely a wonderful celebration. And I'll never forget. I mean, an hour. You, you kept eating for an hour. Yeah, yeah. I, I still do that. I, I, I still do. <laughs> How's it feel? It feels great. And, and like you, I mean, a couple minutes ago, you said that you can eat what you want to eat without a relapse of pain because your immune system is solid. Your body is solid. Your head's not afraid of all the food. And so you have peace of mind when you eat it. And I'm the, I'm the same way now. And it's such a gift. I wish everybody could have this gift, you know, because... At first, people are grasping for answers. You know, what can I do? How can I, how can I help? And the selections are limited. You know, they have very few options. And so typically, by the time people find me, they're already well into their worst condition. They've already been to the doctors. They've done the drugs. They've done the diets. Nothing has worked. They're still searching and seeking, and they can't find it because there's so few options. And by the time, as I said, they, they come to me, they've been weakened so, so much by attacking their own bodies and weakening the immune system through trying to escape the pain that it's like they can't believe that they're allowed to eat whatever they want. Mm -hmm. So we actually wean them back onto a proper diet and take that process gradually. Yeah. But that's one thing I wish everybody knew. You can eat what you like when you have a strong immune system. So let's get that immune system strengthened. And the way we do that is by changing our beliefs and our behaviors. That's what the pharmaceutical companies aren't going to be working on, you know, how to change people's beliefs and behaviors. That's what rewires the brain. That's what strengthens the body. That's what alleviates the stress that causes the inflammation in the system that creates the pain and the symptoms going forward. So we're removing the root cause instead of fighting the symptoms at the surface. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it works. That's why, that's why it works. And that's why, that's why you can break free of the diets is because the diets aren't necessarily hitting the root cause, right? Some little bit of stress, a little bit of hope, some science, they can all help, but diets sure. are, are secondary. Yes, I agree. No. Okay. So here's a scenario. This is my final question for you. So put yourself in the situation of when you were first diagnosed with AS, whatever age you were. I actually don't know what age you were. I was 22, 23. I was 24. 24. Yeah. Okay. Um, what piece of advice would you give to that younger version of yourself who had just been diagnosed with a very scary disease? and been given a prognosis of a life in pain. So for me, the pain started when I was 20 years old and I went to practitioners who couldn't discover what it was. Some of them told me it was all in my mind, you know, it was all in my head and I just needed to tough it out. And it got worse and worse until at the age of 24, an orthopedic surgeon diagnosed me with ankylosing spondylitis. And at that point, I took it as an identity. Ah, now I know what's wrong. Okay, great. Now I have at least some closure because I've got an answer to what it is that's happening with me. I'm a bona fide victim. 
of spinal arthritis, this condition I've never heard of that's hard to pronounce called ankylosing spondylesis or, you know, whatever the doctor told me it was, of course, AS. Mm -hmm. And I went straight into pain body. I became an alcoholic. I was self-medicating with, with drugs and all kinds of crazy stuff. And I mean, I went off the deep end emotionally and it took me a while to get myself back on track. Uh, but that was one of the scariest times of my life. And I, so I can resonate and I can have compassion for people who are going to that point where they're real, you know, they don't know what's wrong. And then they finally get the diagnosis and now, oh, okay, now I'm labeled. It's like the scarlet letter, you know, tattooed on my chest. AS. So what I, to answer your question, Skylar, what I would uh, want people to realize is that it's not a death sentence. And simply because there is no pharmaceutical cure, it doesn't mean that there's no solution. So I want people to realize just because there is no cure doesn't mean there's no hope. So you take a holistic approach and you will find the solutions. In fact, that's what I spend my days doing is creating uh, classrooms and books and training for people who are ready for this. And I put together the AS Recovery Challenge group coaching program. It's an eight-week course to teach people what to do and how to do it to find relief, remission, and recovery from ankylosing spondylitis. So there is hope, and there are many, many people who've given testimonials. There are many more who didn't give testimonials, but I've got hundreds of people who've given testimonials to that effect about, I can't believe how this is affecting me. It's incredible. It's amazing. And... I'm off the medications and I'm off the diet and now I feel no pain and so forth and so on. That's what I spend my life doing. It's creating resources for these people to be able to have hope and change and health and wellness and wholeness and happiness going forward. So that's what I would want every young person who's been diagnosed to know. There's hope. There's a solution. We have answers. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And it's so true. I mean, now there are a lot of answers. When you were diagnosed with AS, there weren't. And so it kind of makes sense why you would go into depression and, and like alcohol addiction, because you didn't have the answers that, that now you offer other people like myself. And it was very cool being part of that last recovery challenge group to see the changes in people, to hear them describe firsthand the shifts in their body and the changes in their mental state. And I remember being very impressed at the progress that people were making quickly. It happens quickly. Some people are out of pain in you know the first couple of weeks, pain gone. Other people take a little bit longer. There's no set time schedule for everybody to follow. You go, you'll go at your own pace and you'll learn what you learn in your own time. Yeah. Uh, but in eight weeks, you can get the training and all the information and guidance you need to follow this going forward and come into remission and recovery. Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. Well, and I really, I really respect the work that you've put in, Peter. You're so dedicated to people with AS and you've been a huge gift to myself and many, many others. And it's, it's fantastic having you on this podcast. But before we go, I do want to have you give an opportunity to say where people can find you. What are your websites? What's the, the best way people can contact you from here? Yeah, so we have a number of websites out there, but I think the best one that people can go to to find out more is called AS Recovery Challenge dot com and that has all the information and all the links that you'll need to go and find any information that you want to know about what we're doing and how it works asrecoverychallenge.com cool cool well that's great and again i want to recap how awesome it is to be able to do this podcast with you when I think about the state i was in when i was 26 years old and i was crawling on the floor because i couldn't walk I mean, what a dream come true to be here. And um, I'm honored. 
So thank you for your time. It's fantastic having you on the podcast. I'll give you just a moment for any last comments you'd like to make. Well, I want to thank you and, and let you know that uh, you're doing wonderful work in the world. You're a very inspirational individual. Many people love and follow you well. And this is not a mistake. Again, this is ordained. This is coming from a deeper source within you of destiny and purpose and mission in life. And so I'm very, very pleased and proud to be associated with you in these podcasts because we're making a difference. Yeah. And uh, taking people out of suffering. I mean, we're not just healing the, their bodies. They're not just healing their bodies. They're healing their lives. And what could be more rewarding than that? Yeah. Yeah. So good on you, man. Well, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. And we will, we will continue the podcasts and we'll have you back on very, very soon. But thank you for your time tonight, Peter. It's been fantastic. I've really enjoyed myself here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. We will talk to you again soon. All right. Bye-bye, my friend. Bye. All right, everyone. What an interesting conversation, right? Once we understand how significant the brain is in understanding what is happening in the body, there's so much that we can do about it. And I will tell you that if you have AS, if you have psoriatic arthritis, even a number of other autoimmune diseases, there are literally thousands and thousands of things that you can do every single day to improve your life, to reduce pain, and live the life that you know you can. So acknowledging the, the facts and the truth of what we have talked about in this podcast and will continue to talk about in future podcasts, it changes the game entirely for the tens of millions of people that have been diagnosed with the same disease as I was, AS, psoriatic arthritis, irritable bowel syndrome, and it affects people in countless other areas that are dealing with chronic pain and some level of autoimmune or inflammation or something going on in their stomach. There are millions, there are tens of millions of people that are feeling hopeless, helpless, and victimized. And if this is you, you do not have to feel that way. Like I said, there's so much that you can do to reduce your pain and live a better life. So please, we are a global family. People with AS, people with psoriatic arthritis, we are all in this together. And so I ask you to share this podcast for people or to someone that you know is in pain. Share this to a Facebook group. Share this on your news feed. Share it to someone that you feel can benefit because you never know whose life you might be changing. It took one person for me to find on YouTube, Peter Winslow, to change my life forever. And I've made it a very, very high priority in my life, the, the utmost priority to create this content, to distribute this content to you in hopes that you will hear it and understand it and get on board and live a better life. So we are all in this together. I feel that this is our responsibility to share positivity to, to share empowerment with the people that we know and love and care about. So I ask you to do your part as well. To find me, you can find me on skydenton.com. That is the best place to go. You can also find me on my personal Facebook page. Just search Sky Denton and come and friend request me. I'm, I'm here. I'm available. So just friend request me. You can also find me on YouTube and Facebook under the Ankylosing Spondylitis Reduce Your Pain title. The video format of these podcasts will go there. You can also find the audio podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and a number of other podcast hosting platforms. So my friends, I could not have accomplished what I did alone. I needed the help. I needed the guidance. I needed guidance from people that had the answers that not only I wanted to hear, but who had been where I was and understood how to get to where I wanted to go. And especially the people that had actually already done it. 
That is one thing that makes me very unique, is I not only know what it's like to live in pain, I know the steps to get out of it and to continue living a life that is very, very different than it was years ago. So this guidance, this experience, teaching the tools and the method to expedite your life into a life of less pain is what I'm offering you, is what the people I work with are offering you. And I guarantee you it is absolutely, absolutely invaluable. There were days where I would have given anything to have one day without pain. And now that's my normal. And it's because of understanding my body. It's because of what I want to teach to you, right? It's this, it's the same information. Your body works just like mine. And so I encourage you to get on board, to get involved, because I've been a part of this type of coaching now for over five years. And I've seen a very big difference between people who sit on the sidelines and people who get on board. And the people who decide to, to get on board are the ones that make the changes. The people that sit on the sidelines, and there are far too many, in my opinion, there are far too many people sitting on the sidelines, and those people usually do not make progress. So I encourage you, I urge you to honor yourself. Honor the people that love and care about you, and get on board reduce your pain, live a better life, and I'm here to tell you that it is possible to feel good again. So again, my name is Sky Denton. I am a pain reduction coach. I am I have become what was one of the biggest gifts that was ever given to me. Someone who understands pain and how to get out of it. So, it's an honor to be here. I'm really really grateful that you're listening, and I encourage you to share this podcast Come back, listen, 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 and learn. Get involved. And if you go to my website, skydenton.com, and let me know that you found me through this podcast, I'll give you 10% off any coaching services or any product I have offered. And that's my encouragement for you to to get on board, to live a life with less pain, to learn the empowering knowledge that, that changed my life. And there's nothing that I want more for you than to live a better life. So with that, I'm out. And I wish you the very, very, very best.